Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Today, the first part of our ranching thread of shows on the Urban Cowgirl channel shows season 27. We're going to have a thread of ranching and a thread of farming. And this is the first ranching thread. And each time we do one of these, we'll try to explain in the description of the show what it is we are concentrating on. Uh, and then each show will have several, probably several different episodes, different horses uh, being used, being trained for ranching. Now, Eve is my best rope horse. And in season 26, close to the end of the season, we took Eve out to the uncovered arena on a non-rainy day. And I talked a little bit about ranch roping. Can you bring me my ranch rope? I like ranch roping. I like it much better than chute roping because it's certainly more realistic. It is a long, not too uh, heavy, not too tight, tightly wound lariat that can be used to rope a critter. Uh-oh. Let me drop it over here to rope a critter from a long distance because uh, you don't know where they're going to go, whether your horse is going to take you to follow them when you have no chute. Chute roping, the cattle usually come out of the chute and make a straight path for the other side of the arena. In ranch roping, you're doing it in a, a fenced area usually, and uh, you need to have a long reach. So it's really a different skill for the roper. It's a different kind of rope. And the horse has to understand that not only will they be trying to put you in position to rope the cow or the steer on a straight path, but you may ask that horse at the same moment to go over their haunches and turn 180 degrees because the cow may go there. It is a much more realistic but much more useful skill when you're ranching. Now, I, my loop is a little too long, so here's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to tuck it under my arm, which ropers usually do when they have a big loop, and they, you don't want to get your loop stuck under your stirrup, especially if you're on a fast-moving horse going after a fast-moving critter. Uh, Eve hasn't been in here to do roping in years. I don't even have my double reins on, but you see what she's doing? Okay, I'm asking her. I've got my roping reins on, which are easy to handle when you've got a lariat in your hand. I'm going to ask Eve to back up. Good. This is going to be really a lightweight session, showing you tack, showing you prerequisite skills, showing you the exercise that we're going to present to Eve uh, at first in this season. Now, notice that I don't have a roping horn. I happen to be in my flat saddle, but it doesn't matter. I don't intend to dally, and I'm comfortable in my flat saddle from my English Morgan Class A horse show days. So. I am going to now, I've got a good team today, see what happens. I've got the lariat loops in my left hand. I'm going to look over and give even indication with a very slight pressure on my legs. Stay in the center, stay in the center. Whoa. Look. Neck rein. Whoa. Angela, can you walk out to the middle? This is my, my roping horns that we have various ways of moving. OK. Oh, Eve thinks she's supposed to follow it, which she is, but not until I give her the go-ahead. And the go-ahead will be something as simple as moving my reins over her neck. I'm going to teach her today to rate for ranch roping and maybe to throw a loop or two. 
on this sand in the square pen and also in my uncovered arena, it's very hard to pull anything around with the electric bike or with the ATV that we have. We have a child's battery operated ATV. Um, but to have somebody pull it along on foot is an exercise that's well worth the effort because your horse has to realize that if the cow or the steer goes slow, the horse is supposed to go slow. And, uh, and then uh, if the, uh, the horse happens to end up on the wrong side of the roping horns, well, then either I have to reposition my horse or I have to be ready to rope in a very weird position, like over her head, over her neck, and it's uh, quite a, a variety of situations that one could have in doing this particular ranching task. And we are here uh, on, uh, in our urban rural setting doing it on a very small ranch, only seven acres. Okay, now I'm going to ask Eve again. You see, she's been good. She's getting a little bored. I'm going to ask her to... I'm going to look over her ears. I'm going to ask her to back up by sitting on my pockets and in, out and in with my legs. Whoa, good. And I just stopped those cues, and she stopped moving. I'm going to walk Eve up to the roping horns, and then I'm going to ask her to give me a good whoa. I want soft woes and soft goes. I'm looking over her ears, a little bit of squeezing, staying in the center of the saddle. Whoa, whoa, had to tug a little bit, good. Now I'm going to look over to my left, neck rainer over her haunches. Don't want her to go forward, I want her to go to the left. Whoa, nice, nice Eve. Now in ranch roping, <laughs> roping from this position is not unusual. You don't know what the cow or the steer is going to do next. Look at ear, Eve's ears. She hears it. She's usually pretty good about that. Tuck it under my shoulder again so it doesn't get stuck under my boot and my stirrup. Okay, I'm going to now ask her to move her haunches over by putting my left leg behind the cinch looking actually behind me on my left. As soon as I looked, she knew what I wanted from her. Notice, by the way, that we do have a uh, breast strap on, and we've got a cinch holding it up at the, right, the correct angle. The correct angle being we want this breast strap not, not to be going straight across the shoulder line, but up with the shoulder line. So trying to make do with this flat saddle, we've made do with all different kind of tack here, trying to accomplish a proper tacking situation for ranch roping. Now, I've got a lot of coils in my hand because the ranch rope is so long. Fortunately, I have my roping reins on, which are short and thin. I'm going to make it so that if I throw this loop, because I'm in a good position to throw it, I'm on the left side of the horns, I did okay, but I didn't catch the horns. But that's okay. That wasn't my objective. My objective was to let Eve feel the thrust of my throw and the next objective is to let Eve realize I'm going to make a sh smaller loop for that. Notice, by the way, that I have my spurs on today, but with Eve I try not to use them. She is very sensitive with the legs. But if I need them, I can have them there. It's better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. Angela, walk around very slowly in big arcs. I'm going to tell Eve, it makes noise, but I want you to follow it. I'm looking at it. Okay, stop. Whoa. Nice, I got a nice, whoa, I'm going to back her. I'm going to get her used to backing every time I stop. Good, okay, another big arc. 
I'm looking at the roping horns. I don't want her to go too fast, so I'm tugging. I'm going to cut across here with her front end. Nice. See how it's going up and down? That's okay. Whoa. Okay, you can whoa. I like the way Eve was real, real good about allowing that roping horn to look kind of wild and not get riled up. Those horns are so far apart that I knew there was no chance of me roping it with that loop so small. So here I go again with this trick of putting the loop under my armpit. It's all right. Let's see how she reacts when I drop it. Swing it. And very carefully, very slowly, pull slack. And I did get two horns that time. Okay, Kyle, you could uh, take it off the horns. This is not a breakaway Honda, by the way. Last time at the Uncovered Arena, I had a breakaway Honda. Thank you. Okay. You can see where I'm headed, if I can get there. I'm going to be carrying my loop, carrying my coils in my left hand, following this moving object at a very slow pace at various different paths. And I'm going to ask Eve to allow me to try to rope those horns from any which position. Eventually, I'll put my western saddle on, have a horn on my saddle. Once I rope, I'm going to ask Eve to allow me to stop her and feel the pull of the dally on the horn. The dally being you take your rope and very carefully wrap it around the horn in such a way that you can unwrap it if you need to very quickly. But the purpose of dally is to stop the moving object. So we're going to try that too. That may take all of season 27 whenever we do ranching, the ranching thread. Uh, I might try it with Sadie, Eve's daughter, and Semi. But for now, I'm going to concentrate on using Eve because she's the biggest Morgan that I have. She has a very good disposition for this kind of thing. And if I do get to go to any kind of ranch roping uh, where there's a large herd of cattle, I believe that she will be... Uh, a good disposition horse to have under me. And that's all for today. In this session today, we're on the creek bank and Eve, while she's a very well dispositioned horse, is extremely afraid of sounds and lizards and uh, small prey uh, predators. So um, we're just getting her accustomed here to this corridor because this is the corridor where we want to um, use Sela to pull the stone boat, which is also a roping, a mechanical roping machine, um, to give Eve practice to rate it and to give me practice to rope it. Well, for now, we're just getting Eve used to being here in this corridor again. And you can see that we've cleared the ground up until uh, where they're standing right now, but way beyond it is a lot of storm de debris. So we're still clearing this corridor to make it a safe place to train Eve and Sela. And Angela is up on Eve today uh, for this kind of desensitization. Uh, and she used this new three step that I bought for me. We've got to get Eve used to having that next to her because I am having some hip problems. It's become obvious that I'm going to have to um, do things a little differently, but I don't want to give up anything I do with my horses and my cows. I just have to do them a little differently and safely. So as time goes on, we're going to be coming out here, especially on non-rainy days. Today is a rainy day to um, have Eve stand here while I rope this dry steer. This is just a vinyl made with vinyl rails and some hardware, and uh, the head is made out of wood, is a, another device to practice roping with. But you see, Eve has to be willing to stand here. And so we're giving her every opportunity to get desensitized to being here where there's 
reams and reams of eucalyptus trees, a, a creekside bank uh, that contains a lot of predators and just other critters like deer, which really aren't predators, but very often a horse will perceive a deer as a predator, especially when they go bounding around in leaves and ivy and so forth and crawl through the fences. We see that all the time here on this creek bank. Now I'm going to move back a, um, a few steps. See, here is my ranch rope. I'll use it or I'll use my breakaway rope as situation permits. Ranch rope is softer and longer. Uh, the breakaway rope uh, will uh, allow me to dally and break away from these metal horns. I'm going to be trying all of these things in due time with E, but for today, just to show you what our training tools are and uh, our uh, desensitization process is like here, we're giving you a few minutes of video. A postscript, as we often do, uh, I forgot to mention in this session that I am using a flat saddle. And the reason I am is because at this time, it's easier for me to get in the saddle. Uh, I think my hips are getting better. I think I'll be able to go, go back to my Western saddle with my dally horn. My circle Y is my favorite soon, but for the time being, I don't want to stop practicing. And I have uh, team members to help me, but sometimes not too many. So uh, here is a breakaway Honda. Right now I have some duct tape uh, on the Honda, um, but if I cut that duct tape off, this Honda will break away from whatever target I have successfully roped. And it will break away easily, so I believe I don't even need a horn to practice that part of the task of roping with Firecrest Easter Eve here at Shadrack Farms. Just came back from the Horseman's Reunion at Paso Robles. Learned a lot of things there. Bought myself a flag. A really useful flag. You saw how Eve's neck came up. If you want to apply pressure, both sound and sight, and yet have something very convenient, very lightweight wand with a holder for your wrist, a very comfortable handle, a flag of this sort is very effective in many situations. This is what we usually use. It's just a riding crop. But I'd say during training, something of this sort is worth an investment. The side saddle simulator needs some alterations, so Sonia did not successfully mount the saddle to practice roping in this session. So this session has become pretty much a, a desensitization of Eve and Sela to each other because we're trying to get Sela lined up as if we were going to pull a stone boat, which we've done many a time and we have that on camera. But now with Eve here, Sela's hard to line up. Kyle just noted that Sela, with her yoke on, who do, she depends on her peripheral vision, she doesn't quite trust having this horse here. Let's see if you can do it. Angela, walk up a little bit, come back, make a U-turn. See if you can get Sela straight between her chains so that if we wanted to attach them to there, good, let's see. Okay, not bad, we could work with that. Okay, and then what would I do if I were on Eve? Or I can do it from the ground too, but I prefer to do it from the horse. I would swing the rope. Now Eve is certainly aware of that. She hears it. She sees it. I have manipulated this rope on Eve many a time. And I like to, when I practice, go in positions that aren't quite right. Being to the right of the steer's hip is not quite right, but you know what? If your horse hasn't taken you to the right position, can you rope it in the wrong position? Can you rope it facing the wrong way? I didn't swing high enough for that. Let's see if I can try it again. I have to be able to swing this rope in the right direction, in the right height, with the right power, and catch those horns. There you go. 
horn. I caught a half a head on the horns. That's a legal catch. See if I can do it again. Watch the way I swing the loop over my head. Fortunately, I'm not having joint problems in my arms. Eve is doing fine. I even touched her just now. Again, the same catch. I could pull and turn a cow if I had the right saddle and the right power. I like doing this with Sela and Eve here because then that variable of desensitization becomes less and less important. Same catch again, three times in a row, and I say, that's good enough. But this is a roping steer that doesn't move, no matter what's pulling it. This is a roping steer that does move, either a human being, an ATV, or hopefully like my little mini zebu heifer, Sela, can pull it for me to practice roping. Again, wrong position. Didn't catch because I ran into this roping steer. Well, you know what? When you're range roping, you've always got to realize what else is in your way. A tree, a branch, another animal. I don't like shoot roping because it's not real. It's skillful. You need skill to do it. But it's not real, it's not really useful when you want to do your ranching. I've got Eve behind me, Seal in front of me watching every move. The roping steer there in the wrong place. But I caught my two horns on my stone boat. Horns. And I have uh, no problem, from the ground anyway, to pull that rope off and try again. And now to finish this, I'm going to show you where's the right place to do this. I'm going to be closer to Eve. I have to be off to the left. And notice how I'm forming my loop. It becomes kind of a thing that you do without thinking off to the left and my horse is supposed to be facing to my left so that her head isn't in the way. And you know I caught the horns but it flipped off because I didn't have the right angle on the loop. Every time I catch or not catch I try to analyze what's wrong. It's like swinging a bat or a tennis racket, what did you do wrong or right? I'm going to step farther back to give myself a longer reach. And this time, I got my two horns, I pulled my slack, and you've had kind of a roping lesson in an urban setting uh, with a horse and a cow and some roping training aids. And that's all for today. Well, we're back at the barn, and Angela, who Oh, uh, good. Who does have legs <laughs> that work and hips that work. Got up in there. Now, can you bring that right leg? Okay, first push your, your butt back. That's it. So you feel stable because that's what a side saddle is all about, right? You have a place for your butt and your hips sitting on your pockets. Uh, how does that feel, that right leg there on, on the uh, shelf, so to speak? Too high up? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I think it would be, maybe you could get used to it. Could get used to it. Okay, no, neither of us have ever uh, ridden side saddle. We haven't even seen one for real, although you can go to eBay and see pictures of one. So you know, with Everett here, Everett's here to uh, help me redesign the simulator. Uh, Angela, say it with, with a loud voice so we can hear it. Uh, what you what you feel would make it easier. If this was smaller, maybe it would be. Because getting up past it 
exactly that's why I couldn't get up because I can't spread my legs out at my hips that far okay but how about how, when you said higher your right leg looks comfortable there right now what would you rather have it I'm not sure I think it's just the newness of it just okay okay and when you when you got up there it, it was too bulky to actually get past it wasn't it and that's what I, that's the trouble I was having. Okay, we'll see if we can come up with something better at our next session. And Eve is much better here where she isn't on that east bank where she knows there are a lot of predators. She's always kind of worried when she's back there, especially with Susie and Sela hanging out. Susie is Sela's mom. Oh yeah, see how you had to get out of that stirrup? Yeah. That's uh, one reason that the Mexican cowboys and some other cowboys have tapaderos. That's where you've got a piece of leather in front of the stirrup so you can't fall into the stirrup. Yeah, yeah Everett. Are you still on camera? Yes. Well, one of the reasons it's high is that that's designed for something different. It is. And all the padding that's under it's got it raised well off the back of the horse. Yes. So but I'm, I'm willing to cut that itself. thing to whatever size we need. No, I'm talking about the padding that's underneath the strap going around the Right. I'm willing to cut that padding. That's uh, foam rubber. We can cut it with a, you know, some kind of a saw. The other thing is, I don't know if how you're going to have to do it, but clearly Angel got into the horse the same way you would normally get it, and she had to swing her other foot over the horse and then come bring it back over. Yeah. The whole idea, I thought, is that you can't do that. Right. So, so can you do that on a side saddle? Can you get into the I, holder? I I'm not even a horse person. Right? I know. <laughs> uh, but I would think that you would want to put your right foot in there to, so you could jump, you know, get your butt into the, you know. As put your right foot in the stirrup. Right. And get your and butt in the right raise place. Raise yourself up to put your butt on there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I would imagine that's the way that would work. Well, you know, I'm going to have to do some Googling <laughs> how to get into a side saddle. Uh, you can almost find anything you want in uh <laughs> on the internet nowadays if, with the right search words and uh, by the time we do this next time I'll maybe have a better idea and a smaller side saddle um, cradle for my right leg right even if we have to cut that foam rubber unless by then I have found a side saddle here in Santa Cruz County that I can try or even buy See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.